Pilot Ray, The Tale of a Snail, read by Jana Bröker. In a wild secret garden, not too far away, lived the smallest of snails, and the snail's name was Ray. Ray wasn't alone in the garden so green. He lived with his brothers, Steve, Francis and Dean. Ray's brothers were known for their skills far and wide. They would boast about them with their chest full of pride. But what about Ray? What was special about him? He was slow, not creative, not strong and too slim. All you are is tiny, his brothers would scream. But Ray's superpower was dreaming, a dream. He wondered all day how it feels to fly high like a bee or a bird through the blue, endless sky. One day, he announced, I'll be flying up there and you will be gazing at me in the air. I will be Pilot Ray and I fly far away. None of you care about me anyway. Oh, forget it, his brothers were laughing out loud. You'll never succeed. Snails can't fly like a cloud. When Ray found a rapper, he hoped he would fly. He folded an airplane and pushed it up high. But Ray was too slow and he failed to hop on. So he watched it take off. Soon the airplane was gone. At noon the next day, the air filled with heat. Ray climbed on a berry all juicy and sweet. He chewed and he chomped, well, he ate a whole lot. Soon he yawned and lay down, then dozed off on the spot. Ray was easy to spy, lying there on the red, snoring peacefully in his strawberry bed. Ray didn't notice the sky turning black, nor the crow swooping in to have snail for a snack. It wasted no time and it grabbed the poor chap. And that was how Ray quickly ended his nap. Ray was scared for his life because once he had heard that things don't end well in the claws of a bird, he yelled, help, oh no, help. And he made such a noise that it woke the whole garden, including the boys. Steve, Francis and Dean all looked up straight away this was surely the final goodbye for Poray. They had tears in their eyes, held them back with all might, when they watched little Ray disappear out of sight. Quietly Dean sighed. I'll miss that snail though. You can't choose your femme, but he's still our bro. High up in the air, things looked terribly bad. I won't make it thought Ray, and it made him so sad. Why did we waste time with the fighting and such? Why didn't I say that I loved them so much? With claws wrapped around him, as sharp as a knife, he decided to cherish his last moments of life. He breathed the cold air, smelled the late summer breeze, and looked down at his home at the creek and the trees. Oh, what is this thing that is catching my eye? It is white and it flies right below in the sky. Little Ray made a plan. Now I know what to do. He first held his breath, so the crow had no clue. Then he wiggled and jiggled, ignoring the pain. I can't go up now, there is freedom to gain. 
Soon he slipped out to the claws of the crow. Down, down he fell, and the crow didn't know. He had left there behind in the crow's prison cell nothing less than his house, his beloved green shell. Ray fell down with a grin, fireworks in his brain. Then he dropped with a plop on his own paper plane. The goggles in place and his scarf wrapped up tight, pilot Ray flew back home in an elegant flight. Right above the green garden, big circuits he flew. He spotted his crew and he yelled, I love you! Steve, Francis and Dean looked in shock at each other. Then they cheered loudly at the return of their brother. They greeted him warmly and jumped for a cuddle, then huddled together to kiss and to snuggle. And gently they whispered, We need one another. You are still so tiny, but a great little brother. That Ray lost his shell, that remember forever. He was known from then on as the first slug pilot ever. Hooray for Ray! That was Pilot Ray, the tail of a snail, written by Jana Bröker and illustrated by Svetlana Luther.